Hi, I am Eugene Bacon, an African-Australian. I am coming to you from Kulin Nation. I am a mother, a writer, an editor, a daughter, a sister, a friend, a scholar. I am here today to introduce you to my book, Danged Black Thing, by Transit Lounge Publishing. Dung Black Thing is a collection of short stories, black speculative fiction that casts its gaze at women and children in the village. I am a sum of many, and I write my roots. Today, I'd like to read a short story, When the Water Stops in Danged Black Thing. It's a story about what happens when water is so scarce that we must extract it from blood. But who's? I'd like to accompany the reading with graphic images as it's very important that the severity of our climate situation today is not lost. You will see vivid images of water droplets, crimson in a splash. You will see cartoon caricatures of the leader of the nation and the rich woman in the metropolis killing people in her cellar. You will see a black man holding his head in trepidation of what he has done to his village wife and the 14 hungry children that are, for him, simply options. And you will see an image of Afia, a starving child, furious at the world as his brother peers across his shoulder. When the water stops. When the water stops. As the climate turned. It hurled at them bushfires that raised huts to the ground. Dust storms that swept away families. Drought. All the cattle and sheep gone reduced to skin, then skeletons. At first, the villagers took turns on the bleed, sharing dreams and fears, understanding that as people, they were the same. But a typical grown male has a blood volume of just five liters. A 40% loss is deadly. The threshold 39% has only 92% water in it. The rest is washed away in glucose, hormones, proteins, fats, vitamins, mineral salts, and carbon dioxide. What good is it? Carbon dioxide may induce dizziness, tiredness, restlessness, convulsions, or coma. So with all the minuses, how much water in a bleed could go around a village? They sifted the question on their minds as volunteers sucked on cactus leaves and sap, figs and desert ants, four to eight weeks having bled for the clan. But still, they were not strong enough to take another turn when it arrived. The loss was not replenished. So where they first volunteered, now they drew sticks. It was plain luck or missed luck. A stick was a stick. A short one was short. If you drew it, your fate was sealed. Your only consolation that this death was not a lonely one, but a communion that met society needs. But even the sticks that were drawn eventually stopped. It was a sacrifice too big. So now 
It was a matter for those with money or bigger stakes to determine who to massacre. And that determined whose ashes would float in the air, figuratively speaking. What really happened took place in a vat. The woman in the vat. What she's doing this week is sitting in a bowl right there in the heat shimmer. She's awash with memories of drowsing, unfolding, everything in slow motion. When she looks back on this time, what will she remember? She watches the smoke swirling like a benevolent hug, giant clouds bubbling out the world. Where are you now? Her soul is an object brightest in the sky. Today, she's a blade. Tomorrow is a wish. The leader of the nation. Ten Years ago, the big leader came out of his shelter, keen to stand on the steps of a shrine, opened as a museum to the Pope. He stunned human rights leaders, a few high courts, and many mothers when he pushed out his lip and held a Bible for one full minute as the camera snapped. Riot police fell with fat sticks, rubber bullets, and gas masks on peaceful protesters, brandishing slogans about the art of cherishing and love. What was a drop of blood when the economy outweighed civil unrest and stocks soared higher? Did you see the Dow? A gain of 267 points and the advances in the Nasdaq composite. Evolutionary theory was about natural selection, the form that would leave the most copies of itself. Light years on, every act Bishop in an alternate universe, outraged by the misuse of a facility of worship, would consider the historic violation of the principles of humanity and utter three spaced words. I can't breathe. Protests were always ugly, thought the leader. And a new election was coming up. The rich woman in the metropolis. When the water stops, the blood must flow, says the woman with a rainbow diamond around her wrists. The billion-dollar gift came from a cousin of a cousin of a great uncle whose name she tried to remember, but it was just too hard. She flourishes from the catastrophe of others. She blooms on the unimportant, like the people in her cellar, beggars from the village. There's a the narrative she doesn't believe in. The kind of story reflected in old photos by art historians. Her fabric is the politics that gave rise to Hitler, Mussolini, and Amin Dada. She can't help it if those people don't belong in a near perfect picture. They are mistakes, feelings of awkwardness that cast a different image and it shifts each time she looks. It's never authentic. There are many books about humanity, but this is hard. Turn off the sound of their groaning. 
she snaps to her servants. The moaning is a sound that's never black or white. It doesn't obey the rules of composition. If their cry is a question, it's a cry in a language of Babel. She doesn't understand its vowels, syllables, syntax, parables or context, and it's impossible to try because it's so hard. What's not hard to understand is vintage produce that has a good nose. The ones from the village come at a good price and their blood is pure. It's uncontaminated by the city's pollution. Village blood wears the right acidity, a sweet aroma of smoke, bacon and pepper, violets inside a copper finish. And blood that's vintage must flow for the survival of her species. She cradles with affection a labradoodle puppy to her breast. A village husband under pressure. The revolution came when he alluded to reason. It was a reason created from the reflection of 14 hungry mouths and three dry cassava biscuits to go around. It was a reason that made him ask the question, wife or children? She'd brought them into existence. They initiated a cycle of living that was a torment. Perhaps his was an excuse to be an unkind. Everyday hatreds, resentments, regrets. They crept in like dwarf monkeys and became pests, stealing, raiding, and all that. He was not the sort of person to hold a grudge on matters that came along with a slow marriage. So it was right to say that it was fear that decided his choice. Fear. When his wife's own revolution came, there was no question where her truth lay. Husband or children. He made things happen. Yeah, sorry. They said what happened in a vat was quick. He missed someone to run to. But there was enough money to feed hungry children now. And the youngest, just two, a fear the Friday-born child. Abimbola, the rich-born child, but always poor. Amara, the graceful one, now pot-bellied and bold with kwashako. Chi, ke, re, po, the quadruplets with nylon hair and eyes filled with sand. He made things happen because, after the wife, 14 options still. Afia, one of the 14 motherless ones. I am a broken egg on a blistered road, a dying bird on a razor wire fence. The jackal trots this way, that way, sizing how to eat me. My nostalgia is here again. No school, no soup, just an empty sky whistling as we bury our dead. I am a marked card. Red marks the spot. The arrow will whiz into the eye of a dried up fountain. Are you my mother? There's a skeleton trapped in the black mamba's hissing. Grey feathers swirling the wrong way. The youngest child speaks. I 
am in search of something I don't know. There's a hand and a gaze, a smile and a scent. It's a comfort, it's a warmth. I don't remember the face that comes and goes, the love that is a crack. It's complicated, it's unsafe, blurred and full of crumble. You remember this moment over and over, wishing you and the rest of the world remembered different. So that is when the water stops from downed black thing. If you'd like to read more of my stories, please get a copy of Dang Black Thing by Transit Lounge Publishing. You can talk to me, connect with me on Twitter at Eugene Bacon. Find out more about my books at eugenebacon.com. <laughs>